Hey guys, Malaman Man here. I just finished my workout. Heart still pumping. Charging myself up for the evening, for the afternoon. Finished my morning work. Take a little bit of a break. And I see clients all evening as well too. Busy day as a professional trader, as a coach. Now today is my first day unfooding again. My first day empty, 24 hours empty right now. My first day empty in about 13 days. I was a little nervous about getting back to my unfooding, I gotta tell you. After I had my holidays, came back last week, I tried to, you know, coming off of, off of my holidays, eating with my family. Last week I thought I would just try to be a fruitarian, try to keep it raw food. I did that pretty well for the week last week, but you know, was in the habit of eating daily. So I was a little bit worried to get back to my unfooding if I was gonna be a struggle or not, but today, first day, 24 hours off of eating again, and I feel fantastic. You know, I got used to eating every single day and, and I thought I was really enjoying that, you know, getting to eat every single day, it tastes great and everything, but nothing tastes as great as unfooding feels, okay? Nothing even compares, nothing even compares. Life is better, life is better without food. And hey, that's my personal opinion, that's my choice. That's what I choose. That's what I will choose, okay? I believe food is just a bad habit that we can learn to overcome. Now, you know, when I first heard of the Breatharian, oh, right away, I, I was intrigued by it. When I read, read about Dr. Arnold Garrett, when I read about Doc, uh, Professor Hilton Hotima, the stuff they were saying, it just resonated with me. Like it just felt like truth, like felt like real to me. So it, it, it felt, you know, like it was within me to do that, to be that, to, to strive for that. So that, that's just something I, I'm passionate about. I want to see what's there. And now that I'm applying that, you know, this, is my, this year I've been, I've spent more time empty than I've had food. You know, I've spent more days empty, unfooding than I've had eating days. And, and I tell you, every time, I just, I just feel like I'm just getting better and better and better from it uh, in terms of like emotionally better, uh, better self-awareness, better self-management, better food management, more healing, like overcoming pain, uh, feeling like I'm getting more alignment within my body, I feel like I'm getting to know the true self, loving myself more, uh, communicating better better with my relationships, uh, seeing my business growing better. Like in every single aspect of my life is getting better the more that I move, make a shift in this direction. So you know what? I'm just gonna keep on going because it feels and, and seems just perfect for me. And that's my choice. And you know what? Everybody on this planet is free to have a choice. Okay, I'm not saying my choice is any better than anybody else's. It's my choice and each of us has that opportunity in our lives to choose. Okay, if you want to hold on to your food, that's your thing, right? I'm going to teach what I've learned from my mentors, from the books that I've read the people that I follow, the people that I interact with and the experience that I have. I'm going to share that. And what I'm going to share is that distilled water detoxification and unfooding heals all things as far as I'm concerned. Right? And when I say distilled waters, it's distilled waters that are in fruits and vegetables. So raw natural foods or live foods will heal all things. Will heal all things. Now today, I put out a post this morning. I put out a post about my top 10 things that I like to teach. The top 10 things that I applied myself in healing my body and life. The same 10 things that I teach to all of my customers, to all of my clients, 
to everyone that reaches out to me to, to try to make some changes in their life. These are the 10 things that I focus on. Now the first thing that I always like to talk about is responsibility. Now you could argue, you know, with my 10 things, you know, what, what order they should be in. Is one more important than the other? I don't know if one's more important than the other. I don't, I don't think I could have um, healed my body and life without paying attention to all 10 of those things. So they could all probably go in one straight line. You know, it's these 10 things that I needed to do to heal myself. And to say that one thing is more important than the other, or they need to be in, in a certain order, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. But listen, I gotta tell you, that choice is a big one. Choice is a big one. Choosing, consciously choosing to make a change in your life, it's impossible to change your life without conscious choice, right? Now, if you don't take 100% responsibility for what's going on in your life, then how can you change it? If you're not saying that I am the creator of it, then how can I change it? If I don't create it, then how can I change it? Okay, I've got to take full responsibility for my life if I wanna say that I'm the one that's gonna change it. Now, if you wanna say that you know some other force outside of your life is controlling you, that's your choice, okay? But then you can't change your life. Some other force is controlling you and making your life happen and making things happen to you the way that they are, then that means you're a victim of your circumstances. And, and I understand if you're a victim of your circumstances, why you would feel sorry for yourself. Poor me, poor me. I'm a victim of my circumstances. You know, whenever I put up something about responsibility, somebody always comes on and says, oh, you know, I was abused. Oh, my mother died. Hey, my mother died when I was 18. My, my mother did this, my father did this, my stepfather did this, my neighbor did this, my brother, my sister did this, this happened to me, that happened to me. You know, I, I, I know someone that lives in a poor country, I know someone that, uh, that doesn't deserve what's happening to them, I know someone that was abused, I've been abused. You know what, this always comes on, this always comes up, okay? I'm not being insensitive. I'm just being real. Look, we all have traumas in our life. We all have problems in our life. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to say that your problem isn't a mighty problem. I'm not trying to put your problem down and say uh, it's not important or it's not bad, okay? But we all have problems. We all have traumas. And my trauma in my life is just as important to me seems just as bad to me as your trauma seems to you. So to me, the problems that I have seem huge. My problems seem huge to me. Your problems seem huge to you. You know, I'm not gonna argue over whether or not your problem is worse than mine or not. I'm not, I'm not gonna have that debate. I'm not gonna have that argument. Oh, but I had this or I had that. It doesn't matter what you've had. Lots of people have had worse problems. You know, the richest woman in the world, Oprah Winfrey, was raped at 13 and raped again at 15, and she's overcome that and created an incredible life for herself. So to say that you have had this problem and because of your problem you can't move forward, that's just a load of crap, okay? We've got to take responsibility for what's going on. We've got to take responsibility for what's going on. Now, people talk about, you know, uh, someone, someone came on today and started talking about, you know, taking responsibility and saying that if I take responsibility for what happened in my life, then that means that the person, the perpetrator that abused me uh, didn't do it, that I brought it on myself. That's not what I'm saying, okay? It's not what I'm saying. The perpetrator has to take responsibility for their actions as well too, okay? And the perpetrator uh, has to deal with the karmic result of the choices that they have made. Okay, so it's not like the perpetrator is going to go through life 
unscathed because of the poor choices that they've made. We all have to deal with the karmic result of the choices that we make. The perpetrator gets uh, has, has an issue to deal with because of the choices that they've made and the victim has uh, karmic responsibilities of the choices that they've made. So if the victim remains a victim and holds on to anger, frustration, sorrow, sadness, depression from the, the trauma that they've been through, if they go through their life you know, bitter, angry, um, frustrated and sad, if that's the energy that they're holding on to and carrying through their life, like the person that came on today and was talking to me about how this had happened to them and they're defending their trauma. And you know what? First of all, again, I'm not trying to put down your trauma, okay? Everybody that has trauma, myself included, has to go through a healing period. We all have to go through healing. Okay, when trauma happens, there has to be a period of healing. So, I'm not putting down your trauma and saying it's not important and that you, you know, that, that you don't deserve um, my um, respect. Uh, I respect your trauma, okay? However, if you want to go beyond your trauma, if you want to get beyond being a victim, if you want to get beyond being poor me, if you stay in a victim state, then you're always going to be pulling um, trauma and poor me and victim and low energy stuff into your life. If you're putting out low energy, victim is low energy. Poor me is low energy. Sadness, sorrow, frustration, anger are all low energy vibrations. If you want to keep and hold on to your, those low energy vibrations and put them out and hold on to them and say, I deserve them and this is what happened. If you want to live in that story and keep putting that story out into the world, it's okay, you're entitled to it. You can continue in that healing mode. You can stay inside that, you know, victim state. But at some point, if you want to move forward with your life, you're going to have to say, you know what, no more of that. That happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, or 5 days, 10 days, 10 months ago, whenever it happened. At some point, the, the hero inside has got to get courageous to say, okay, that did happen to me, but I want to move forward from that. I don't want to stay defending that position, defending that role, defending that, that place that I was in. I don't want to stay that person. If you want to stay that person, that's your choice. You have that choice. You have that right. You can choose that if you like. And there's nothing wrong with that if you want to choose that. But me as a coach, okay, if you're reaching out to me to try to change your life and try to move forward, if you're reaching out to me, then I'm going to coach you on how to do that. And the first aspect is you've got to take responsibility for what's happened. And you've got to say, that happened. And I learned this and this and this from it. Right? When I think about my traumas in my life, right? And for a long time, I held on to them and said, yeah, well, this happened to me and I didn't deserve it. And because that happened to me, you know, I'm, I have a, have a right to be angry here or it's been unfair for me. And as long as I hold on to that, then you know what happened is as long, as long as I held on to that anger and that frustration, that unfairness and the world's not fair. And I had that bitterness and I had that frustration and sorrow. As long as I held it and kept putting it out, kept sharing that energy, I kept pulling trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma into my life. Now as long as you stay the victim, you keep reproducing the same victim stance, the same victim um, occurrences keep happening again and again and again and again to you. Now if you want to stay there, that's your choice. And you can if you like. But what I realized is that because I was holding on to that, I kept reproducing the same position, becoming a victim. The result, trauma, being the victim of trauma again and again and again in my life. So you know what? The trauma and the repeated traumas finally taught me that, hey, why does this keep happening to me? Why does this keep happening to me? You know why it keeps happening to me? Because I keep responding to my life in the same way. 
Life responds to you in the way that you respond to it. If you respond to your life and to your world as a victim, then you will always remain a victim. Okay? If you want to move forward from that position, if you want to become a different person, if you want to um, have different experiences, different circumstances and different situations arrive into your life, if you want to uh, move into your very best self, if you want to move into your happy, healthy, high energy self, your best space, you're not going to do that as a victim. You're not going to do that holding on to the poor me. Okay? You've got to put that behind you. Stop thinking. Stop talking about it. Stop defending it. Stop trying to defend it and say, yes, it's true, it's right, it did happen to me. Yes, it did. Okay? But as long as you hold on to and defend it and start and keep sharing it, then that's going to keep on coming back to you. Listen, Mellow Man saying, hey, thank you for watching. Hey, Jerry, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again soon. And to those victims out there, hey, I'm a victim as well too. Okay? And I'm not putting you down for being a victim. If you want to stay a victim, that's okay. I respect you as a victim. Uh, it's a choice and you can choose it. And if you want to stay there, all well and good. And if you want to move forward, then you got to learn how to dust yourself off. Dust off your situation and choose to step forward into something new. Take responsibility for what's showing up for you. Have yourself a super day.